Hello friends, welcome to Leg Life. You guys, it is a, I was gonna say it's a beautiful afternoon uh, because do you remember in our last vlog when I was like, I think everything's gonna clear up and it's gonna be super nice for the rest of Mackenzie's trip. Yeah, I'm a liar because if you look, it's like so foggy and cloudy. Like even the building behind me, you can't even see the top of it because of all the fog. So there is sunshine. It's just like 2000 feet up above the fog. We're actually heading into the Anchorage Museum right now, one of my very, very favorite places here in Anchorage. It's one of the places we wanted to make sure to take Mackenzie while she is visiting, so today, that's what we're gonna go do. So our museum here in Anchorage is sort of a mix of art museum as well as history museum of Alaska and the Anchorage area. And one of the things that I appreciate is that they don't just have like traditional native art, they also have like modern versions, modern interpretations of native art that you would see in traditional Alaskan art. And it's always fun because they do a really good job of updating different exhibits and different displays. So even though we've been here, gosh, dozens of times, it's always fun to come here and see what they have that's new. I don't remember if I said this in my last vlog here at the museum, but this is actually one of my favorite pieces here. It's a Sidney Lawrence piece. And the reason that it's one of my favorites is I actually have a print of this Sidney Lawrence piece that my grandmother gave me when she passed away. It's what she left to me. So I've always loved this Sydney Lawrence with the Northern Lights. And you can't really see it on the camera, but there's like a little cabin right down here where the light is. Love that painting. So we're leaving the side of the museum that is more art focused. Now we're heading over to the Alaska side of the museum where it tells the story about Alaska, our people, a lot of the history of our state. This is definitely a fun side to explore. Now because of COVID there are some things here at the museum that have changed. Obviously some of the exhibits that you would like touch or interact with, some of that stuff is gone right now. We have to wear a mask. But overall the museum experience so far has been pretty close to normal of what we have had in the past. This is a section talking about kind of the global position of Alaska on the world map and you can see there's a quote here that says in the future whoever holds Alaska will hold the world that's from US Army General William Mitchell or Billy Mitchell in his speech to Congress in 1935 and that's one of the things a lot of people don't know because Alaska can seem like it's a long ways away which obviously it is but because of our global location, I think it's something like 80% of the developed world is within a nine hour flight of Anchorage. It's something like that. And so our position is pretty strategic. So now we're heading into the Arctic Studies Center. This is actually really cool. It's part of the museum that they partnered with the Smithsonian basically to bring back to Alaska. And it is amazing. This actually may be a helpful map when we talk about our native peoples in Alaska. You can see it's a state of Alaska map and there's different labels on here showing where our different native peoples are. So down here in Southeast, you have everything from Shimshian, Haida, Clinket, then you get over into Athabaskan, Inupiaq, Yupik. And so you can see the way the state kind of divided up there. And the Arctic Studies Center just has some of the most spectacular pieces in this entire museum. It's definitely worth walking through, taking time, reading the different like displays they have for each item, reading where it came from, what it was used, but then also like what it was made out of. Because remember the materials that would have been used to make this stuff are very different than what we'd have today. So one of the things that I think is so interesting is reading like this piece right here. If you look down here, it's an armor skirt. A fighter's lower body was protected by a skirt of leather hoops that could be hiked up under the arms for running. So this, made with leather, but you can see it would kind of like accordion into itself. So they'd wear this to protect themselves, but then they could pull this up as they ran. That to me is just so, so fascinating. This might be the most Alaskan story I've ever heard, and it's a little bit long, but I wanna read it to you guys because I think you'll appreciate it. It says, the day of her sophomore prom, my daughter was out on the ocean scanning ice pans with binoculars, the air quiet, the sun shining, the water kissing the aluminum boat with joy, and she grabbed her rifle, she shot. Her grandpa drove the boat forward, her uncle harpooned the silvery seal, and they brought it to an ice pan to butcher. She cut the blubber off the seal. She and her uncle butchered the animal. She placed water in the seal's mouth before releasing its skull, spine, and spirit back to the ocean. Her first seal, she delivered the blubber and meat to her prom date's grandma. Rose made seal oil with her daughter, Melissa. Oil they'd use all year long with meals of dried fish, boiled potatoes, dried seal meat, carrots, and herring eggs. Melissa learned how to prepare and stretch the skin for tanning. Sid went home, showered the seal smell off her hands, and put on a sparkling gold prom dress, and had her makeup done. Her date picked her up in his family's Chevy. She danced until it got dark, laughed with friends. She felt like a queen. You guys, that is the 
that is the most Alaskan prom story I've ever heard. If people are like, hey, what's it like to grow up in certain parts of Alaska? That, that is what it's like. Spectacular. All right, friends, so we just left the museum. Also, beard problem number one with masks. Do you guys see? Look at this, like I have the mask line, what is that? Ugh, so frustrating. Anyway, the museum was a ton of fun. I always, always, always love going there. It's one of my favorite parts in Anchorage. Also, I just dropped my mask on the ground. You guys, I'm having all sorts of mask difficulties today. I'm glad we were able to make this happen though while Mackenzie was here. It was one of the things that we wanted to do, didn't know if we were gonna be able to do it, and we got it done. So I know I say this every time we come to the museum. If you come to Anchorage and you have time and you're into museums, uh, I definitely, definitely recommend coming to check it out. I think it was $20 a person. It's like 17 if you're an Alaska resident. They do have like AAA discounts, that kind of stuff. So not bad price for such a great museum. We just got home from the museum. Sherry Beth is home from work. Sherry, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, sorry I didn't get to join us at the museum today. Yeah, you were near me though. We were close. Mm -hmm. Could you feel our presence? I could, yes. Excellent, so we just got a bunch of things in the mail, and we don't show everything that we get in the mail, but there was a lot of things in one day, so we figured we would show you guys the stuff today. Uh, just quick mail haul. Somebody sent Sherry mug treats for her birthday. Woohoo! Are you kidding me, like rainbow chick Chick, rainbow chick, <laughs> rainbow chip, <laughs> muck treats, hilarious. Um, also, this is from Sunny Jim Morgan. Is that how I'd say your name? You had a Disney cruise that was canceled, and you said you were making these as FE giveaways. Um, Please okay. keep having an Etsy shop. This is, yeah. this is insane. You guys, this is like real leather. When you open this and smell it, it is leather. And the stitching is beautiful. Okay, that's an unbelievable gift, so thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then our friends Jess and Jackie, who are always so stinking kind to us, they're about to move across the country. Uh, and they were going through their stuff and they found this, look at this, this Lily Bell Disneyland Railroad ticket. That is so fun. We don't have one of those, so that's cool. And then they also sent us a bunch of stickers because they're kind of in the middle of a sticker addiction right now, which <laughs> honestly, same. Um, look at these. The Cactus No Touch Sticker. The Hamilton Immigrants Get the Job Done sticker. Just these are so great. So I'm gonna actually link to Jess and Jackie down below. Please go follow them. They've been so kind to us for so long. We really do love them a lot. And then you guys, you guys. <laughs> Larilyn, who is just like amazing, sent us stuff from this bakery, TSP Baking Company. It's a box full of freaking cookies. Chocolate, chocolate chip. I think white chocolate macadamia nut. I think maybe like a lemon. Also, can I be really honest? I just so appreciate how much you guys know me because in her letter, Larilyn said, don't worry, Adam, no sugar cookies. So thank goodness for that. You guys definitely know me. Again, thank you to everybody who always sends us everything. We appreciate it so much. And I know everything doesn't make it in our vlog. Some things do, some things don't. But please know that we read every letter, every card you guys send us. And we just absolutely appreciate it. Um, we are definitely going to eat all these cookies, use all these stickers, eat all these mug treats. Um, and I gotta say, the leather bag is the nicest quality. So thank you guys so very much. Full confession, second vlog in a row. We're back at Wild Scoops. Um, it's just that good. But tonight we're not getting our ice cream in the cones. We are getting, what are we getting? Pints. Oh, pints of ice cream. Pints. So we talk a lot about the ice cream they have here, obviously with that baked Alaska topping we showed you guys in the last video. But they also have pints of all of their ice creams here that you can get as well. So if you don't want to enjoy an ice cream here, you can get that. Also look at this, Midnight Web Ice Cream Pie, Oreo Crust, Midnight Ice Cream, White Chocolate Ganache, and a Plastic Spider, yes please. Hello friends, it is the next day and we are at a place that many of you guys will start to recognize in our vlogs. I feel like we've been coming here more and more, which I absolutely love. We're at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, about an hour south of Anchorage. We're here with Mackenzie and Auburn today. Sherry again is at work, but I think we're heading down to Seward after this. We're just gonna spend a little bit of day heading south from Anchorage and stop number one for us, definitely the Wildlife Conservation Center. You guys know this, one of our very, very favorite place. So let's see what animals we can see here at the center today. So here's animal number one, and you guys, the moose is almost never up. Auburn, on all of our times that you visited here, never once. he's like laying down in his... He is usually inside <laughs> laying down. I, I meant she. <laughs> here's one of the brown bears. Uh, Auburn asked me if the bears would be out, like if they hibernate, and I realized that I actually didn't know the question about that, or I didn't know the answer, if the bears actually hibernate here. But this guy is out, and it looks like he's been digging a hole. Look at this. 
but he looks exhausted. And as we're sitting here watching bear number one, look who shows up. Doesn't it look like this bear has just like absolutely given up? I mean like butt in the air, just legs out, face down in the dirt. So funny. One of my favorite animals here, and you guys, look at what's going on over there. There's some feistiness happening here. So it's really funny, we're like looking, it's like, oh, there's one, there's two, and I don't know if you guys can see, but like, there's two of them back there that are just, oh, they just like pop their heads up. They were like rubbing their faces on each, oh, look at that. Just a couple of caribou in love. All right, friends, back in the vehicle. Um, we're just finishing here at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Um, another great visit. It's always a great visit. We got to see a little porcupine talk there at the end. One of my favorite things about this trip is that we didn't plan this, but we kind of followed the guy who has like the feeding truck, like <laughs> unintentionally. And so every animal we'd go to, he'd show up and then he'd be out there and be like, muskox. Susie! Mosca! Linda! <laughs> just like calling the animals in. And it was so great because we got to see so many of the animals eat. And then there was one time that we were over by the... the black tail deer. Yes, thank you. The black tail deer... Black tail... <laughs> Take four. The black tail deer. And uh, he was just kind of telling us about them and like telling stories about them. And I don't know. It was just super fun. So that was kind of fun and unplanned. So the Wildlife Conservation Center, as always, big thumbs up. Now, we're heading about an hour and a half south. We're going where? Sea Life Center, Seward. We're going to Seward. Okay, so we just stopped somewhere and you guys are gonna see this in all three of our vlogs, I'm pretty sure, because it's just spectacular. You guys, the fog, as you can see, is still around us, but it's starting to lift and we just are passing a lake and just, just look at this. So the camera totally does not do this justice, but like there's the sun peeking through the fog, there's fog coming off the lake, there's fog in the air. This is so, so cool looking. And then up this way, you can see that light frost on the trees. And then up there, you can see the outline of the mountain just above the top of the fog. So we just stopped another place alongside the road and I wanna recreate something that a lot of you guys will have seen before. Uh, if you guys remember when Corey Williams, uh, Mr. Safety, Dude Like Hella, first moved to Alaska, his first viral video in Alaska was at a lake when the lake was just starting to freeze, he threw a rock on it and it made laser sounds and he like lost his mind. So I think we're gonna see that happen right now. Listen closely. I need a bigger rock. So I'm not sure if you guys could hear that or not, but it does work. It didn't work as good as where Corey was, but it definitely, Works. I'm trying to get up one more rock. See if I can do it again. Let's see. A little bit. Well, we've made it from the beautiful town of Seward, Alaska. It's Seward. I just hear people all the time pronounce it Seward. Um, Seward is one of my favorite places in all of Alaska. Truly, truly stunning. And you guys, there may have been fog in Anchorage. There may have been fog on most of the drive but it is an absolutely beautiful cloudless day here in Seward. The mountains are out, the sun is out, the sky is blue, and we are gonna go right over here and explore the Alaska Sea Life Center. As you guys know, one of our favorite places in Seward. Also look at this, vlogging. Mackenzie was just vlogging. We're very professional here. Now we're heading to what might be my favorite place here at the Sea Life Center, the Touch Pool. I always, always, always love doing this. I don't know why. I know I'm a 40 year old guy, but it's just so stinking fun. Also, they have like an eel in here. Definitely not part of the Touch Pool, or at least shouldn't be. All right, Touch Pool. I want to touch this. That's not the it's not an octopus, stop. Whoa. Crazy. And these are some of my favorite things to touch, like the sea cucumbers. Because they're just like, they're mushy, like me. This is so cool. The sea lion is just swimming around, and he just like climbed up on his rock. I've never seen him do that before. It's so funny, look at him. He's like, oh, and back in the water. So now we're heading out to the observation viewing deck here on the upper floor of the Sea Life Center. And as you can see, still an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day here. Look at this, you guys, isn't this, like how is this real? 
spectacular. Back inside now, and we are heading downstairs. Look at this guy. We got a big old Alaskan king crab just walking along the front of the glass here. He looks delicious. So in all of our visits to the Alaska Sea Life Center, I've never seen the octopus this active. It's cool to see it just kind of walk along the glass. So the sea lion was just swimming around and then he just kind of like stopped and just sort of bobbed in the water for a minute. Just popped his head out and now he's going back to swim and let's see if he dives right by us. The guy here at the Sea Life Center was saying that he is 12 feet long and 1,400 pounds. So big, big boy. And there he is. Those of you who are familiar with our house, and maybe you saw our house tour where we showed a bunch of art in our house, uh, one of our favorite artists is a local artist named V. Ray. Uh, we have, I think, two or three of her pieces in our house. And here at the Sea Life Center, they have a bunch of her stuff as well, which I love also. How cute is that? We just finished the Alaska Sea Life Center, and now we are just kind of looking through the gift shop, seeing if there's anything that we cannot live without. And these masks are kind of hilarious. Look at this, they have like animal masks. Like you can be like a turtle. You can be a whatever that is, or I think that's a shark. Oh my gosh, if that opens up and there's shark teeth inside, spectacular. Another successful visit to the Alaska Sea Life Center. Always, always fun. Um, it's one of my favorite places to bring, not just like guests to Alaska, it's one of my favorite places to come myself. Uh, no matter how many times I've been here, I always still enjoy it. It's always interesting. I always love seeing the animals, learning a little bit more about them. So the Sea Life Center, a success. And you guys just missed it. Auburn walked in and hugged that tree. And for those of you who watched her uh, sewer vlog when we came here last time, it's because this is a town Christmas tree. It has Christmas lights on it still up there. And so Auburn, who loves Christmas, loves this tree and had to give it a hug. We were approaching Hangar here in Seward, so we had to get lunch. And we came back to a place that Auburn and I came when we took the train down here. It's called the Highliner. Um, we remember the queso and the food being really well, so we decided to come back to what we know. Um, not sure exactly what we're gonna get, but they have a lot of things that look good. To drink, I started with hot chocolate, because you guys, I might be Alaskan, but I'm cold. My hot chocolate just arrived, and you guys, this is an absolute work of art. Look at this, like chocolate dripping down the side. Like that right there, that is magazine quality hot chocolate. Absolutely love it. It's running. Oh, Mackenzie just said, look at this, you guys. We're just gonna sit here. We're just gonna watch it, film the whole time. Not really. Also, we got queso. Yes. Lunch is here. I went with what's called a cowboy. It's the, you can get it as a burger. I got it, mine is the chicken sandwich. Got barbecue, sauce, got onion rings, some bread and butter pickles on there. And then I went with the chowder. The chowder is really interesting. Um, I've never had a chowder like it before. It almost tastes like it has a queso base. Like it tastes similar to their queso. It's got like a cheese base to it. It's really good. It's just like that first bite, totally not what I expected. Before we leave Seward, we are heading down to the docks so that Mackenzie can get some photos down here. Auburn is skipping her way <laughs> down the docks. Happy as always. All right, so friends, we've stopped at the same turnout we were at earlier in the vlog where all the fog was. You remember it was like super foggy here? Uh, it's totally changed. Look, blue skies above us, but you guys, check this out. Look how perfect the reflection is. Like, which way is up, which way is down? This is insane. Also, like, I think Mackenzie is having like a spiritual moment right now. So <laughs> oh my goodness, that is absolutely stunning. Just like, look at that. Unbelievable. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna turn the camera over, watch. Which way is up? Look at that. You can't tell. So we just had uh, kind of a unique opportunity. Also, Sherry's here. Hi. <laughs> um, we got a message yesterday. I think so. I think yesterday from a food truck. Mackenzie, look at Mackenzie back there. We got a message from a food truck who's participating in the great food truck race. There's Auburn. Say hi, Auburn. Hi, Auburn. Um, <laughs> it's here in Anchorage today. We didn't know this. Also, look at my mask line. Um, and it's a food truck that's called BFD Breakfast for Dinner. Uh, they didn't know when they were gonna be serving. They didn't know when the race was gonna happen. It happened today here in Anchorage. So we rushed back to town 
and we were the last four people at their truck before they closed. They'd sold out of everything else. The only thing they have left is uh, a Hawaiian French toast. It's French toast, it's got like some coconut on there, it's got some pineapple on there. Oh, there we go, that's how that looks. Um, he did say they had a reindeer poutine. Wish I would have had that. Now, full confession, I don't know what the rules of the food truck race were. My guess is that they had to have like one Alaskan dish, hence the reason there's like reindeer poutine. Uh, anyway, don't know when this is gonna air, don't know when it will be on, but when it is, we will certainly be watching uh, there were a number of cameras, well, I mean, one big camera mm -hmm. and an audio guy. He was booming you. Can I be really honest? I'm surprised none of the crew said anything. There was no signing of waivers. There was no, hey, we're gonna film you. There was none of that kind of stuff. There was just like walk up to food truck, order, and like you're being filmed the whole time. Yeah. So I expected, I expected something else. Even just like a, hey, we're gonna film you because I am not. If you just saw, down for that, if like, you just saw that this was like a food truck alongside the road, and you're not from Anchorage, and you just stopped, you would have no clue what was going on. Right. Like I, I assumed that we would be filmed because we knew that they're that's what they're here for. But sure. like, yeah, if you just pulled up and were like, ooh, a food truck, and then there's just this huge camera in your face, I'd be like, excuse you. <laughs> but kind of fun. And uh, now we're gonna go eat our Hawaiian French toast from mm -hmm. the breakfast for dinner food truck. Yeah. I think they're from New York. Isn't that right? I think so. Uh -huh. He sounds like he's from New York, yes, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for you to know something and for you guys to know something. There was an update that came out on Instagram two days ago. I am now allowed to stream live on Instagram. Remember, I used to have a one hour limit. Yeah. Guess what my limit is now? Oh, no. Four hours. I can go live on Instagram for four hours at a time. So I don't have a husband anymore. Yeah, we had a good run, but <laughs> I'm gonna be on Instagram a whole lot more. Alrighty. You guys. Move to Florida with me, Sherry. Four. Auburn just said, move to Florida with me, Sherry. <laughs> uh, also, for those of you guys on the vlog who are just watching this, we're carving pumpkins now. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a Baymax. I don't know. I don't know what McKen I think Mackenzie's trying to like make a soup dish over there. It's like, a bread. I'm making a bread bowl. That's actually a loaf of bread. Yep. Sherry's got hers going. Auburn's got hers going. Um, starting to carve. You can see we're streaming on Instagram Live over here. So if you guys don't follow us on Instagram, uh, clearly you need to make that happen. Here's what I carved. I carved Baymax. Um, also easiest pumpkin to carve ever. Love it. Look at Auburn's. Check even colored in the cat. So. So Enjoy cool. It during the daytime. Mackenzie's over here working on a self portrait. We've not been graced with a preview yet. We got our like jar of gunk in the middle. And Sherry is working on a secret project that I already gave away to the fine people over here on Instagram Live. Pumpkins are finished. Sherry has the castle. <laughs> look at that. Mackenzie, look at self portrait. Mackenzie. Yes, that is me. I actually. Like it's spot on. If <laughs> facial recognition, that would open your iPhone. 100%. <laughs> There's Auburn's cat. Look at how good that looks. I like the arched back and the tail. And then you guys, are you satisfied with your pumpkin carving? I'm gonna be satisfied. Yes, Baymax, I am. <laughs> pumpkin carving 2020 is finished. All right, friends, that is where I'm gonna end today's vlog. Thanks for hanging out with us as we got out and explored a little bit of Alaska. This was the kind of stuff that I was really hoping to do while Mackenzie was here. So I'm so, so, so glad that we have been able to. We've had a really great couple of days. I love the fact that you guys have been able to hang out with us. Friends, we love you so much. Thanks for being a part of our Leg Life community and we'll see you on the next Leg Life video.